Well, hello friends, it is a beautiful sunny day. We are getting into multiple days for the unforeseen future of 50 plus degree weather every day and staying really warm at night. And that means the flower beds are starting to wake up. I have plants starting to wake up. More important are the pollinators are waking up. See that word play? And that means that it's time to clean up the beds. So I usually try to leave my beds this is the new one I put in last year with you guys. I planted it out by my road on each side of my driveway for an entry. And I try to leave my beds uncleaned until we have those warm days where the pollinators wake up and leave. So now we can talk about cleaning these beds, what I do to get ready, how I fertilize, the mowers here, it's gonna help. So I bring the mower over because what I do in the spring, and this actually, when I used to work at a landscaper, this is what they did too, so it makes me feel even better that I think it's just a really good method. So if you remember, this is the flower bed last year that I have a beautiful Skyland spruce. I have a couple bald cypress. These are the Lindsay Skyward. So bald cypress lose their leaf needles over the winter, but then they come back here in the spring. And then otherwise what I have are eco-friendly, pollinator loving perennials. So I have Millennium Allium that are coming back. I have some wonderful cat's pajamas, Nepeta, which cat mint, you know, we love that. I have, I think it's um, Crazy Blue Jean Russian Sage. It's a great one because it stays slightly smaller, but it also just has a really good form. And right now, if I kind of bend down, you can see here where that Russian Sage is. It looks like sticks. I like to cut it back to the ground, so we're gonna work on that. We also have all these leaves. So I have a massive pin oak by my house. And what a pin oak does, and most oaks, they drop their leaves late, if not over the winter. They don't drop them until spring sometimes. And that means I have a lot of flower beds that fill up with leaves. So like I said, I leave them until the pollinators are really waking up, which they're doing. So now I can get in and really work at getting all this leaf debris out, which I should say, why do we get leaf debris out? Why do you clean out beds? I was just actually talking to my mom about this yesterday when I was running over there to kind of help her and talk to her about some flower beds. It's really important to think leaves break down, they're beautiful compost, they're beautiful mulch, but when they're left whole, they can actually really inhibit breaking down because they're so big that they pack together, they can be mildew causing, moisture causing, but also pest little habitats once the good pests have left. And in that sense, you wanna get them out of the flower bed so the plants can really come out. You don't want them to be suffocated by the leaves. So what I'm gonna do is actually use my mower, that's what's right behind me here, and I'm going to mulch them on the mower and bag them up and then use them on my compost pile. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut down all of my Russian sage and I'm just gonna use a small, just secateurs for that because you can use a big shears if you want to. You can use something small like this. But once I get in there and cut all this down, you can see I'm just gonna let it come out. You can even get in there if you want to and you can break it, but we're actually getting where it's green enough in here that if I don't just cut it, it doesn't break nicely. So I've actually already started getting a lot of the debris out just by my small rake. And what I'm doing is going in with my secateurs now, just my small hand pruners. And that's what I'm cleaning up all this debris from the Russian sage with. And the reason I cut the Russian sage down to the ground every year is, like I said, I just like the form and shape better. If you can cut it off down at the ground, it flushes out new growth. Otherwise it gets really kind of long and stick and twiggy and it can be really hard to manage in future years. So cutting it down to the ground is really giving me that allowance. So for the Russian sage, like I said, I had to nip it off with a pruner because it's very woody and stocky. What's great is for things like this cat's pajamas nepeta, I do not have to even, you can literally just go into your hand if you want to, just crunch it up and let all that go into the soil or just take a rake rake it off and look how that top growth leaves and it just exposes now all that new growth. So when you take it off like this or you crunch it up and let it go back into the soil, you're giving this new growth a better chance to really flesh out, to grow, to really green up. And that's exactly what you wanna do. The greening up is actually another reason you wanna wait till you're gonna have these warm days consecutively and in going into spring. If we would want, if we would still be in a instance where we could have deep freezes and be going back to snow, I wouldn't want to uncover them yet because I'd want that protection. But we're now in the safe zone where I'm going to start uncovering things, letting things just flesh out. So now all I'm doing is going in here with my small rake and I'm just raking up all this debris out into the yard where I'm going to be able to pick it up with the lawnmower. What it does is it just mulches it up. So it crushes it up. It's perfect then to add onto my compost pile. Sometimes I use it as mulch, like in the fall, I'll put all the mulched up leaves 
on my garlic bed and that will just cover that garlic all winter long and add some great kind of natural compost that will just work into the soil. So now we can get these leaves out. But the important part too is I'm also roughing up and raking the mulch that I have down. I don't just pile on new mulch every year. I like to rake it and freshen it up. And if it still has that two to three inch layer of mulch, I do not add any more. You don't need to keep piling it on. Instead, you just want to freshen it up and have it look good. So I'm going to finish kind of raking up here and then we'll just pick it up with the mower. So once I pick it up, I will take a leaf blower usually and blow any that's left, any of the small fines that are just on the grass here, back into the flower bed with a leaf blower. But I wanna show you, I wanna open up the back here so you can see this gorgeous leaf moth mulch that you get. And you can see it's just so fine and ground. So if we look down in here, look at this beautiful fine leaf mulch that now I can use on my compost pile. I actually would feel comfortable putting this back on the beds, but I am in the front yard here where people drive in, so I like it to look a little bit more clean cut. So instead, let's go put this on the compost pile. You can see my compost pile that way. It's messy, but why not? Let's go back there. So I just throw the bags, like you saw, right on top of that pile, and I have two big piles, one smaller pile somewhere else. So I try to work in a three year rotation where I'm adding things to a pile in one year, letting it sit for a year before I use it in the third year. And in that time, I'm trying to turn them a lot with, I usually have to go get a skid loader from the farm and just turn them because they're so large. And they're a mix of mulch debris, sometimes some grass clippings as long as they're, I don't treat my grass, so I feel comfortable using my grass because I want my compost piles to be organic. And I will also put on some turkey manure. We have a lot of turkey farmers in the area. Um, and I will put on turkey manure and let it compost fully. So just because you put manure on, I don't like to use it straight as is. I like to let it compost in the pile. So this will be an inadvertent um, compost pile tour here just so I can show you what I'm kind of working with. So what we have here are two big piles. This is the one you can see I just added to. This is the one that is just about ready to use. And I've been turning it multiple times a year for the last few years, and look at this. When you dig into this pile, look at this beautiful, rich compost. So compost is not soil, it is compost as in it's organic matter that actually breaks down into a beautiful, what looks like soil. It should look like soil when it's done, but it's not soil. It shouldn't have a foul odor. It should actually have, if anything, like a sweet type smell. And that to me is what you want to go for. So yes, you actually can smell it and it shouldn't smell like anything you put into it, but instead be completely broken down. So until it's at this fine stage like this is, I don't wanna use it. I wanna wait until it's ready to use and that it has this nice broken down quality to it. So for a pile like I just added to, I just put on all of that. And every so often, yes, you will find things in your pile you don't want. Like this is one I forgot to recycle, obviously. So I need to do that. But in a pile like you see that I just added to, what I will do is turn it. And I will do that multiple times this year. I will add my kitchen scraps that are just clean vegetable scraps to that pile. So it's kind of like you're continually having a life cycle of feeding your garden from produce that you did have and then let that work down with everything else until it gets to a stage of beautiful compost like this that I will use in my with my potting soil if I want to but mostly I use this on my vegetable beds and in my landscaped beds so that's what I do with any of the leaf stuff I pick up any of my compost material I put on these beds or on these piles and I thought it'd be good I get so many questions on compost I'm going to admit I'm someone that it's not a beautiful pile it's just piles but it is important to show those things because not everything is beautiful to look at. My piles aren't beautiful, but they add so much beauty to my garden over time. So I think we need to go grab now, I'm gonna take the mower back, grab my gator so we can fertilize a couple of things in the flower bed we just cleaned up. Um, I have the Skyland spruce, so an evergreen I wanna fertilize. And then a couple, like the bald cypress I'll fertilize too. So I'm back now, I put the mower back, I brought over what I needed, which was my fertilizer. So in this bed I have a Skyland spruce, like I said, and a bald cypress, two of those. And 
The evergreen, obviously, is a pretty easy one to fertilize. So for most evergreens around my place, I use always just the Espoma Evergreen Tone. It's super easy to use. Spruce, love it. Pines, love it. The one evergreen I do not use it on are Arborvitae. So all those Arborvitae, they instead get plant tone. So there are just a few differences in certain evergreens and Arborvitae and Boxwood are the ones that I will always use plant tone on. But the other evergreens I will always use evergreen tone on and it's super easy to do and it's one of those things that I'm gonna be honest have I always my whole life fertilized everything no but do I notice a difference when I do it yes and so that's why I really do like to make sure I fertilize and it's really easy to do just at the base of the tree I put the amount I need around the tree which with any fertilizer, you wanna make sure you read. What I do love about choosing Espoma organic fertilizers is that you do not have to fear because they are organic. So they are a lot softer on plants than a lot of harsh synthetic fertilizers would be. These are a lot more of a beautiful kind of fertilizer that helps the plant, helps the soil, and I feel a lot better about using that. So I put it here at the base of the plant, and then I just like to work it in, and I usually do that with my rake. And the reason I wanna work it in is sometimes when you use, no matter what type, but fertilizers on a plant, and you just leave them right on top of the soil, so say you just throw this on and leave it, and there's big piles of it, when it rains and when it gets wet, it can actually start creating kind of a thick, cakey layer, and it doesn't really break down easily. That's why you want to rake it into your mulch, into your soil lightly, and then it will slowly work down with the rain needed. You don't need to dig up or try to till it down deeply thinking that you're going to get it close to the roots. Nature will do that on its own if you just lightly rake it in on top and that's all you need to do. And then for the bald cypress, I'll just go over here and get my tree tone. So my tree tone is what I use on my fruit trees, what I use on a lot of my shade trees and it's one of those things that I'll do it a lot when they're younger too and maybe when they get more established or really into large trees then I don't do it near as much so especially since I just planted these last year I want to make sure they have some you know extra extra help going into another season and I can tell already if you look closely those are the leaves the little needles that will here open up really soon and that to me is super exciting so I'm going to set this up and I'm just going to finish fertilizing everything So you can see I really now cleaned up the bed and this is the best part. It looks fresh, it looks new almost, and it looks like I've put down some fresh mulch. I didn't. I just went through and I raked all the mulch up. That's a really great thing to do before spring is just kind of give your mulch fresh life. Raking it up is gonna help bring you know, turn the mulch, bring new mulch up to the weather because the mulch does get gray over a year and it can get kind of compacted. So just freshening up with a rake gives it new life and you don't just need to pile on mulch which really ends up with just too much. We're gonna get up to 80 degrees this coming week Fahrenheit and that means a lot of these things are gonna really explode. The allium already are but the catmint really will, the Russian sage will really start pushing out and everything's gonna want that fresh life. What I hope this really does is excite you and hopefully help you see year to year the process of these beds. I put this in last year with you. I then put in more perennials throughout the summer with you and I planted them and I mulched it with you and now you can see one year in what I do to it. Now I'm gonna let it sit all season long, grow, flourish, and just flower eventually, which I'll make sure to give you updates. So as always, check my website, wiseguy.com, for tips, for updates, but also for tons of recipes for all the garden produce I grow and things I talk about all the time. But also check back on here on stories. I'll always be sharing what's going on, little things I'm doing and giving little updates.